Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to be working on a little, pretty simple, upstairs, so second story, over carpet, mini weight workout gym area. Like many of you, uh, I have a governor that has decided the best way to stay healthy during a pandemic is to go ahead and close fitness facilities. So here we are. Uh, it's a little more complicated and you have to consider a few more things than doing it, say in a garage where we're doing it over concrete. Uh, we're on a second story, so we have to kind of consider designed weight loads. Uh, in the United States, under the residential code, a bedroom is designed for 30 pounds per square foot. That's the minimum, but I think it's probably safe to say most builders build to the minimum. So I'm dealing with a seven by 14 area here, so 98 square feet gives me 2,740 pounds to work with. Um, so it doesn't give us a ton, you know, uh, we also have to kind of consider things like, you know, dropping weights, we probably shouldn't do that. Um, you know, if, if you're gonna be into some really heavy power lifting, you know, the second story might not be the best option long-term. So just a few things to consider, you know, watch the weights, do the, you know, allowance calculations and I think we should be good to go. The actual plan here is I'm going to start with a three quarter inch tongue and groove plywood base. On top of that, I'm going to put a three eighths plywood, another layer of three eighths plywood on top of that, perpendicular to the first layer to hopefully avoid any flexing in between those two. And then on top of that, I'll be placing these. They are recycled rubber tiles from Home Depot, I believe, Traffic Master is the brand. Um, they smell pretty bad right now, so I'm kind of uh, sucking that up for a few minutes while we get these installed. And um, that's kind of the plan. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to put a, a rig here and then leave this area right here for, I don't know, body weight stuff, push-ups, burpees, sit-ups, jump rope, that kind of thing. So not a whole lot of room to work with, but you know, we're, uh, we're on a budget and Theoretically, it may not be forever anyway, so uh, let's get to it. I'm going with a rubber gym flooring product from Traffic Master. It's a little pricier than EVA foam options at 279 a square foot. However, I feel it should pretty much last forever. Instead of trying to calculate dimensions, I figured it would be easier to lay out the tiles and measure. Down in the garage, I've got some three quarter inch OSB subfloor panels ready to go. They are a tongue and groove product, so lining things up once they're over the carpet should be pretty easy. Next, I need to rip some trim pieces to provide a hard wear edge and keep the rubber contained. In addition to width, I also need to take just a hair off the height. I want this piece to sit flush with the floor tiles. To fasten the trim pieces to the 3 quarter inch OSB panels, I'm going to use some countersunk construction screws. Any work I can knock out in the garage means less dust in the house. Here we've got about 14 feet laid out. Getting all the tongues to fit securely in the grooves on four sheets all at once was a bit of a challenge until I had an idea. I decided to cinch them all together with some ratcheting tie downs temporarily until I could fasten the one by twos which would hold them into place. On top of the just placed 3 quarter inch boards, I'm going to place another layer of 3 8 ply. This will be set perpendicular to the base and should help or hopefully eliminate any flexing at the joints. While in the garage, I'll cut down and pre-drill. Back upstairs and I've got some very interested four-legged helpers. After his inspection was complete, I could go ahead and tack everything down. Mm -hmm. 
Next, it was finally time to lay the interlocking floor tiles. This was a surprisingly time-consuming endeavor. Hitting them with the mallet didn't really do much. It kind of just bounced off, which is what you'd expect when hitting rubber with rubber. I also thought, you know, while I got everything out, why not make a little sign for the gym? You know, give it some kind of branding. Maybe in honor of these guys. In order to brand my little half gym, I just reused what was left of that 3 quarter inch OSB. I've seen some signage done this way and it doesn't look half bad. I'll start by rough cutting with my circular saw. I uh, need to get something small enough to handle on my table saw. Over here, I'm able to rip off the factory painted and shaped edges. I'm also sizing to 30 by 20 inches. In order to edge band, I'm going to rip some more scrap pine to the exact thickness of the OSB. I'll also use some of it to set the fence. Because I don't want any fastener holes, I'll use my parallel clamps to keep everything tight while the glue dries up. Back inside, and I've mocked up the sign in Photoshop, I'll use this program's built-in slicer to turn a 30-inch print into pieces that can be printed on a normal letter stock. Back outside, and I've got my puzzle pieces. However, before assembling, I need to trim off the printer margins about one quarter inch on all sides. Now on my table, I can put everything back together and just like that, I've got a 30 by 20 inch print from a normal printer. But then came the really tedious part, using an X-Acto knife to actually cut everything out. After my helper showed up and proceeded to take a nap under the table, I went to carving away. The next day, I did just a light sanding on the glued up sign stock. Nothing fancy, just enough to take down any edges and blend any glue lines. When placing my stencil, I needed to actually be pretty careful. I suppose it would be a pretty easy mistake to simply tape it down and spray. But without measuring distances to the edges, we'd end up with a crooked mess. When we're satisfied with placement, go ahead and tape it down. Taking it outside, and I'm going to turn our stencil into a big sticker. I'm using this, 3M number 45 general purpose spray adhesive. This portion of today's programming is where the art in arts and crafts really comes in. We want just enough adhesive so the paper sticks, but not so much that we can't remove it. After it's tacked down, I'm ready to spray. Nothing fancy, just some satin black in semi-light coats. I've got to be careful here, as too much will lift the adhesive and cause subsequent coats to bleed. And now, results time. Oh yeah, that came out just right. Now, all I have left to do is actually use my creation. I'd have to say I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out. Is it commercial quality? No. Should we be dropping 300 pound barbells at the top of a deadlift? No. But for my purposes, it will work. Obviously, being on a second story, weight is a concern, but consider this, my Titan T3 rack weighs 200 pounds. Add to that a 300 pound standard Olympic set and a 160 pound person, and we're only talking 660. That's three large people, or four average sized ones. Really not a whole lot of weight when you think about it like that. So for anyone wondering if you can put a small gym upstairs in your spare bedroom, I say yes. Just be cautious, keep track of how much everything weighs and compare that to the standard residential load ratings of 30 pounds per square foot. The second story of a residential house isn't the place to be hosting deadlift competitions, but otherwise, within reason, should be just fine. Alright, take care.